The inclusion of legends and past wrestlers in wrestling games is an element that can at times be overlooked when judging what makes a wrestling video game great. In most cases, legends only make up a fraction of the available roster. However, a wrestling game without the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, or even Hulk Hogan can really just leave the game feeling off. We've ranked the overall rosters of the SmackDown vs. Raw title series before, but today we are looking strictly at the legends and determining which game, not you, in the title series features the superior class available to players. For this video, we are going off of the legends listed on the SmackDown Hotel website. Let's get into it. The original SmackDown vs. Raw game featured a legends class of 11 different characters, two of which are persona variations of active wrestlers at this time, Kane and The Undertaker. This is the only SmackDown vs. Raw game to feature the Road Warriors and Brutus Beefcake, but the other legends included would become common additions to the game like Bret Hart, The Rock, and Mankind. The roster as a whole in this game is pretty small, so it's no surprise here that this is one of the smallest groups of legends within the title series as well. Polarizing personalities like Roddy Piper and Andre the Giant added a unique element to this collection of superstars and Hall of Famers. Considering Kane and The Undertaker were still active wrestlers appearing regularly on television, the standouts in this class are The Rock and Bret Hart. This is also the only SmackDown vs. Raw game aside from 2009 that Stone Cold Steve Austin did not make an appearance in. Rather than a score out of 10, we'll be rolling with a grading system for this video. And the final grade for this game? C. SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 is a beloved game sporting a phenomenal roster from top to bottom, including the class of legends. 13 different iconic characters, counting Hulk Hogan's three different personas available, make up the group of alumni and icons. Making their return from last year are Bret Hart, Andre the Giant, Mankind, and The Rock. We are treated to the return of Stone Cold Steve Austin, as well as fresh faces like Jimmy Hart and Junkyard Dog, who would make their only appearances in the series here. British Bulldog Jake Roberts and Ted DiBiase would make their debuts in the series and would be featured in later installments as well. This game introduced the very first hardware exclusive, as Jake Roberts was available on the PS2, though a save file from a PSP was required. This class complemented the loaded group of active wrestlers really well, and as to be expected, this portion of the game's roster delivered, just like the rest of it. This is also one of two games that features Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, and The Rock all in the same iteration of SmackDown vs. Raw, which helps this game bring home a final grade of a B+. SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, an iconic game and a staple of my childhood also brought an emphasis on the class of legends this year as it featured a total of 16 playable wrestling luminaries, the largest of the series. All three faces of Mick Foley, including the guy himself, though as a member of the active roster, made it into the game for the first time here. We also saw the return of a legendary tag team as Jim the Anvil Neidhart and Bret Hart made up the Hart Foundation. A bunch of fresh faces that came along like Bam Bam Bigelow, Dusty Rhodes, Jerry the King Lawler, Mr. Perfect, and Taz felt so fresh and welcomed. The great Eddie Guerrero was included into the game as a legend as he almost certainly would have remained active had he not tragically passed and to include him was 100% the right decision in my opinion. Legend mainstays like Bret Hart, The Rock, and Stone Cold were back, and this was also the last SmackDown vs. Raw game that would feature the Hulkster. All of these elements would present a truly complete class of legends, with no DLC needed. This game gets an A plus for me. Are there any games who can compete or even come close? Let's keep going. But first, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Another infamous entry into this title series, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 is popular for boasting such a small roster that really underwhelmed fans. Much like the game itself, this collection of legends left me with mixed feelings, and because of the three exclusives featured in the PSP, this class of legends features 12 different wrestlers, meaning only 9 are available for those on console. The PSP exclusives are something I absolutely hate. I will never forgive this game for withholding Eddie Guerrero when this roster was hurting so bad. We've got The Rock, The Hitman, Stone Cold, Mick Foley, and Roddy Piper all making their return to the game. ECW legends like Terry Funk, Sabu, and Tommy Dreamer are included, despite the latter still active in the WWE when the game was released. Sabu was released from the company only months before the game came out as well. The inclusion of Rick Rude was extremely welcome as well, as he is one of the few fresh faces aside from Sergeant Slaughter, who is locked in the PSP version, 
and the ECW legends. This collection holds some really solid names that are almost necessary to implement into your gameplay because of how small the roster is, but it is again leaving something to be desired. SmackDown vs Raw 2008 gets a C from me here. Fucking hardware exclusives. For those unaware, SmackDown vs Raw did not feature any legends in this game because Legends of WrestleMania would come out only 4 months later and this game would exclusively feature legends, hence the name. Though it did give you the option to port the active roster from SmackDown vs Raw 2009 over to the half arcade half simulation cash grab, that's not quite the same. There were a couple DLC inclusions you could write off as legends like Doink and Vader, but that just doesn't cut it. This game does not qualify. SmackDown vs Raw 2010 marked the return of the playable legends to this title series, although this return was truly lackluster. The smallest collection of legends in this title series only came with 7 playable legends, one of which only available through DLC, leaving some players with only 6 at most. Vince McMahon himself is classified as a legend in this game as well, meaning if you didn't have DLC, your legendary wrestlers you can work to unlock in this game are Bob Orton, Dusty Rhodes, Ted DiBiase but this time dubbed as the Million Dollar Man, The Rock, and Trish Stratus. While it's an interesting batch of names and most are fresh additions, the lack of size this class has really ails its grade. The method in which obtaining these legends also shifted from purchasing them with an in-game currency to unlocking them through Road to WrestleMania shenanigans. This does make for some reasonable correlation to why these legends are included, and they mesh well with the current stars in the game so they do have that going for them, but in all, there's not a ton to say about this class because it is so small. My overall grade? D plus. The final installment of this title series looked to bring back an endearing class of legends, as 2011's iteration of SmackDown vs Raw brought 14 legends including 3 available via DLC. Familiar faces like Bret Hart, Jake Roberts, Terry Funk, Superfly Snook, and Paul Bearer as a manager all made their returns after various hiatuses, whereas the British Bulldog, Lex Luger and the American Badass gimmick of The Undertaker became available later on. This may not have been Rob Van Dam's first appearance in a SmackDown vs Raw game, but this is his first as alumni. Mr. McMahon was once again featured, you didn't have to pay for Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Rock would have been included in every single SmackDown vs Raw game had the 2009 iteration included Legends, I'm sure. Overall, this class may not have introduced a ton of new names to the title series, but Ricky Steamboat and Lex Luger were great inclusions. This is also the unique, or maybe even controversial instance in which Shawn Michaels was included under the Legend umbrella, despite being active with the company earlier in the year the game was released. It's a healthy class of legends, but you certainly had to work for them as the majority were locked behind the Road to WrestleMania gameplay, much like we had become accustomed to by now. This does feel like an average class we've received before, but with many more hurdles to cross to unlock these guys. Final grade, B-. There you have it, SmackDown vs Raw 2007 comes away with the greatest collection of legends available in the game, and honestly, it doesn't really come close. Let me know where you disagree with this list, or which game had your favorites. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy.